The court is now in session. Today, the chamber continues to hear the testimony of witness Kai Vlur. And if it's possible, we'll start hearing testimony of a reserve witness. In fact, there are two. Through TCW901. And another one is through TCW830. The latter witness is in relation to the first January Dam work site. Grafshi, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. Second would be Mr. President for today's proceedings. All parties to this case are present. Mr. Nunji is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived he, his rights to be present in the courtroom. His waiver has been delivered to the uh, grafie. The witness who is to conclude his testimony today, that is Mr. Kai Lu, is present and ready in the courtroom. We have two reserve witnesses, namely to TCW901 and to TCW830. Both witnesses confirm through their best knowledge they are not related by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is Nguyen Chi and Kiyo Sumpon, or to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. The two witnesses will be we we'll take an oath before their testimonies. President, thank you. The chamber now decides on the request by Nun Chia. The chamber has received a waiver from Nun Chia, dated 15 June 2015, which notes that due to his health, there is headache and back pain, he can not sit or concentrate for long. And in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requires to waive his rights to participate in and be present at the 15 June 2015 hearing. He advises that his counsel advised him about the consequence of this waiver that in no way can be construed as a waiver of his rights to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented or admitted to this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report of Nun Chi by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC, dated 15 June 2015, who notes that Nun Chi has a back pain, headache, and dizziness, and recommends that the chamber so grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 for the ECCC internal rules, the Chamber grants Nunchi his request to follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs when audiovisual means. The AV unit personnel are instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nunchi can follow the proceedings remotely. That applies for the whole day. The chamber now gives the floor <coughs> to the co-prosecutors and the lead co-lawyers for civil parties, and the remaining time for the two parties are one session. You may proceed. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours, Council, and witness. Good morning to you. Witness, last um, Friday we talked about your experiences at Kampong Chnang Airfield, and we also talked about your experiences at uh, Knyom Kop Sarai. I'd like to briefly talk about your experiences after you came uh, into Phnom Penh and you were stationed at the Calmet Hospital or near the Calmet Hospital. In your interview with 
uh, DC Cam, you said that you saw some torture near there. Can you expl uh, please explain who you, sh who you saw being tortured? Answer, I did not know uh, that person. And what type of torturing did you see of that person? I saw the person being tied and hanged on a tree a branch. And who was doing that? I did not know the person who did it. Uh, were they Khmer Rouge troops? Yes, they were Khmer Rouge soldiers. And did you see this torture of, uh, of anyone else in addition to this person near the Calmet Hospital? Yes, indeed. About how many times did you see different people being tortured, approximately? I witnessed 30 cases of people being tortured. And do you know why they were being tortured? From what I heard, they were accused of being in the enemy network. And you said in your statement, your DC CAM statement, that it was military troops that were being tortured. Is that correct? Kameru's troops. Yes, indeed, I made that a statement. And was this torturing at the Calmet uh, hospital area, was that before you went to Kenyom Kop Sarai for uh, work, then temporary? At that time, I was a disabled soldier staying at the divisional office. And was that in 1975 or 1976 or 1977? Can you put a, a time on it, please?
I can recall that uh, it was in 1975. Thank you. Did you ever become aware uh, in your work as a, a military soldier um, of a decision of the Central Committee of the 30th of March 1976, which gave um, the authority of certain groups the right to smash, the right to kill, inside and outside the Khmer Rouge ranks? Did you ever become aware of a decision like that? Please repeat your question. I don't fully get it. Did you ever know about a decision from the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Kampuchea giving the authority to different groups within the Khmer Rouge the right to smash or the right to kill? inside or outside the ranks, inside or outside the military? Did you ever know of that decision? No, I did not hear anything about that. And those people that you said that you saw being tortured, about 30 cases, 30 different people, were they from Division 310 or were they from somewhere else? Some of them were soldiers in Division 310, while others were former soldiers. And you said this was in 1975. At that time, do you know why uh, these men were accused of being traitors? I did not know about that at the time as I was a disabled soldier and I did not know about the internal affairs. Uh, you testified that in about 1977, before uh, you were tempered or intensively tempered, as you said, that you were brought to a meeting, and this is in your uh, statement at uh, E3565 English E00863305, and the Khmer in French is in E35658 at 00020677, the Khmer in French. 00812791. Sorry, <clears throat> um, that's actually the wrong passage. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, the passage I'm referring to is uh, English E3565, ERN 00863304, Khmer 00020676 to 7 and French 00812790. To uh, the DC CAM interviewer, you said that 
uh, once Un, the division head, was arrested, there was a meeting called and there was a tape that was played and the tape recording, uh, you said, was a description of Un and Ta Kim's biographies, starting from the period of their struggle during the revolution until the period of their traitorous activities. Do you remember that tape being played to you at a meeting? When Un and Kum were arrested from the division, they called the soldiers and disabled soldiers like myself to attend a, a study session where the tape was played. And as far as you know, when you heard that tape, were the traitorous activities that were talked about, were they true? From what I heard on the tape, he himself confessed that he was a traitor. As far as you know, um, at that time, or before his arrest, were you aware of Un uh, attempting to overthrow the leadership of the Khmer Rouge or not? I knew that uh, Division C and Tent with Un and Kim, where the commanders were about to overthrow the Khmer Rouge force. And how did you know about that? I saw weapons being transported, and when I asked why those weapons were being transported, I was told that I should mind my own business. And in your statement, and I gave the ERN numbers earlier, um, did you have any involvement in preparing foods? You said that you had involvement in preparing food supplies. Is that? Is that correct or not? Food supplies to assist in the organization of the troops for this uh, planned takeover. At that time, I was asked uh, to assist in packaging the food. Can you tell the court, was there ever, um, well, firstly, did the, uh, was the plan implemented? The plan that was discussed, the plan you prepared for, did it happen? Was there any takeover attempt? President uh, witness, please uh, wait, and Defence Counsel Kung Sam On, you have the floor.
Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make an observation regarding the last question by the deputy co-prosecutor. The question to put to a question to put to a, a witness whether the uh, plan was initiated or uh, concluded was difficult for the witness to give a response. The witness already testified that he participating in the packaging of food supplies and saw weapons being trans, uh, transported. And that shows the limit of his involvement. And when it is about whether the plan was achieved or not, it will be beyond his capacity. Thank you. Well, we don't quite know. I, I need to ask the witness the question. Um, then, if the witness says he doesn't know anymore, then I'll, of course I'll stop and I'll move to another topic. Within your involvement packaging food, do you know whether in fact there was a takeover attempt? using weapons, did that in fact happen or not, as far as you know? No, the plan was uh, never realized as the remained people involved in the attempt were arrested. Now, with all of the arrests you talked about, the arrest of uh, the divisional head, UN, deputies, uh, battalion commanders, company commanders, uh, members from your unit, uh, members from Battalion 317, to your knowledge, from what you observed, did any of those people resist arrest from the troops that came to take them away? Was there any fighting? Was there any resistance to any of these arrests? did not know about that at the time. But from all of the arrests that you saw at the meetings at Knyom Kop Sarai, at the torches that you saw at Kalmet, the few arrests that you saw at Kampong Chenang, from the ones that you saw, the arrests and the torches, did you see any attempt to resist or fight back? At that time, I did not see any signs of attempts to resist or to fight back since they were unarmed. Thank you. And of all the arrests that you saw, all of the arrests that you heard about in your division, did you ever hear of any one of those people being given a trial, a public trial, to be able to challenge any accusation that was made against them? No, I did not see any of that. And do you know what the reason was why there was this uh, plan to over for overthrow the leadership? Do you know why a plan was put in place, the reason? 
why people wanted to overthrow the leadership? At that time, I did not know the real reason. The, the, practice of a t the practice of torture that you saw at the Calmet Hospital uh, in 1975, how was that viewed by um, the troops that you were with? Was that a welcome practice or was that one in which it scared people in your unit? At that time, I was a disabled soldier, and I kept asking why people were being beaten up. Those soldiers threatened me to keep my mouth shut and and not to put my or to, not to poke my finger into their business. When. Uh, the arrests of uh, people from your unit and Division 310, when uh, they started to occur, when you started to become first aware of those arrests, were you also aware of arrests of other CPK uh, troops around the country at that time? from what I heard that the arrests were made first in the southwest zone then in the north zone. Just have to uh, finish on uh, one or two very short topics and one is uh, your statement that you made to ECC investigators that you saw Yang Sari, Nguyen Chia, and K. Pok at the Kampong Chenang airfield. How many times did you see Nguyen Chia at the airfield? I never saw Nguyen Chia and killed some pawn. I understand from your statement that uh, you didn't see Q San Pan at the airfield. However, you did say in response to this question at E3 slash 467, English 00205074, Khmer 00170620 and French 00205078. You were asked the question, did you see any leaders at the airfield? And you said, I saw Yang Sari, Nguyen Chia and K. Pok come to inspect the airfield site. So is that now not your evidence that you didn't see Nguyen Chia? or does that refresh your memory that, that you did? Answer. I may 
have forgotten it because it happened a long time ago. Thank you. Just one or two last questions. This is about the structure of uh, Division 310. In, in a document that the court has received, it's E3 slash 1585, and we don't need to show it on the screen, thank you. Um, and it's dated the 20th of October, 1976. And at that time, in October 76, it states that Comrade Un was the secretary of the division, and uh, Comrade Bung, Fung, as the deputy chief of division. You mentioned earlier that um, Ta Kim was the deputy chief of 310. Was Ta Kim replaced at any time and replaced by Comrade Bung? Or do you have another um, explanation why Comrade Bung appears as uh, the deputy chairman of 310 in October 76? Answer, I may have forgotten it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I have no further questions. President, now the floor is given to the lead call lawyer for civil parties. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, witness. My name is Marie Giro. I am counsel for the civil parties, International Council for the Civil Parties. I have a few questions to put to you, and then I'll give the floor to my colleague, Chet Van Lee, towards the end of my examination. My questions will focus on your experience on the Kampong Chinang Airport construction site. I would like to start with a question regarding your arrival on the airport construction site. On Friday, you stated that you arrived on the 15th of January, 1978, and that you were marked by that date. I would like you to tell us whether you arrived alone with the members of your unit or you arrived in the company of other units on that site. <coughs> Answer, when I arrived in Kampung Chinang, I uh, was not only among my group members, there were other members from the different units. Lorsque vous avez été entendu par When you were interviewed by the DC Cam in uh, I'm referring to document E3/5658 the English the comment is 0020667 in French 00 Eight, one. This is what you stated regarding the date of your arrival on the 15th of January 1978. You stated, and I quote, there was a very large number of people from various units. They came in thousands, all adults without any exception. Is this statement in line with what you remember? Answer, I could recall that during that time, a former soldier who were affiliated with the former regime were taken to work at that place. Uh, 
Saviez-vous à l'époque à the time, did you know which other divisions arrived on the site uh, together with you on the 15th of January 1978? Answer, I have no idea. I knew that I was at the site on that day. Y a-t-il eu une réunion Was any meeting held upon your arrival at that site Mark. Answer. There were instructions relayed to us about the construction of the airport and uh, we were also instructed to uproot and pull out uh, grass. Je voudrais vous lire un passage. I would like to read out to you a passage from your statement before the co-investigating judges, the document E34767. The year in English is 00205074, Khmer 00170620, French 0020. 5078. You referred to a meeting, and I'll read out what you stated at the time, and then I'll put a few questions to you regarding what you had stated then. This is what you stated at the time. At the meeting, we were told that we had to be tempered because our chief was a traitor, and if we refused to do so, we would be arrested. Because Levey from the northwest zone was the person in control at the airfield. Witness, on the, ray, on the day you arrived, or the days following your arrival, was any meeting held, chaired by Levey, and which you attended? Answer, upon my arrival, there was a meeting, I could say the m tempering a meeting. I rarely saw Dalloway in the meeting. I noticed that he uh, was in the vehicle for a brief moment, and I had no chance to meet him at all. Quand vous dites qu'il s'agissait d'une réunion de when you say it was a re-education meeting, can you explain what you were told at that meeting? You are referring to your interview before the investigators when you were told that you had to be tempered because your chief was a traitor or your leaders were traitors. Does this ring a bell to you today? Answer. They said that all comrades were former soldiers who were affiliated with the former regime and uh, all soldiers needed to be tempered from this time onward. And uh, we were not allowed to make any complaint. We were told to bear the situation if uh, we underwent uh, the hard labor, and uh, we were told that uh, our former superiors uh, had been affiliated with the former regime, and they were all arrested. We were told to work hard, and uh, we also urged and warned that if anyone did not work hard, they would be arrested and tortured. Lors de cette réunion de rééducation. During that re-education meeting you have just referred to, was it attended solely by members of your unit or it was also attended by soldiers from other units? Mark Morpy. Answer, they were from different uh, units uh, working at that place. Pouvez-vous estimer le nombre de personnes qui assistaient à cette réunion? On parle d'une d'une dizaine, d'une cinquantaine, d'une centaine, de plus de 100 personnes, est-ce que vous... 
who attended that meeting? Was it t dozens of people, hundreds of people, thousands of people? Can you give us a ballpark figure as to the number of people who attended that meeting? Jambab. Answer, I could not recall it well, how many members, how many people were in each meeting. There were hundreds of them in each meeting. Quand vous dites à chaque réunion, when you say at each meeting, did you subsequently, during your presence on that site, attend other re-education meetings? And if yes, do you recall how many meetings were held during that period? Jambab. Answer. I was called into several meetings. Saviez-vous à l'époque? Did you know at the time who chaired those meetings? Answer. I did not know the superior's name because they and uh, they were from uh, the uh, southwest zone. I did not dare to look at their faces. Avez-vous vu à l'occasion de ces réunions des During those meetings, did you see any people being arrested and led away? Answer. I used to see people were taken away. Avez-vous par la suite revu Did you subsequently see those people again on the work site? Mandar. Answer. No, I never saw them back uh, after their arrest. Vous avez indiqué vendredi. On Friday, you stated that you stayed at Camp Cham on two occasions. The first time with your unit, with handicapped soldiers, and on the second day, uh, with uh, trainers from Phnom Penh. Can you tell us about the first days you spent uh, digging earth? Can you tell us the number of people who are in your unit in the first months while you were at Camp Chenal? You are not very specific on Friday. Are we talking of dozens of workers, hundreds, several hundreds? Can you please give us an estimate of the number of people? Answer. When I was told to dig the grass, I live in the, my unit with uh, 30 members, and uh, in different units, there were thousands of uh, workers or members. Donc, lors de ces premiers mois, lorsque so during those first months, when you are digging the earth, you are working in a unit of 30 people, but you are working alongside thousands of workers. Is that what you have just stated? Answer. The work at the airport work site, uh, I met uh, many workers, but uh, when it came to uh, sleeping time, uh, we slept uh, in our own places or quarters. We, na we did not know each other. Est-ce que le millier de travail uh, And regarding the, the, the odd thousand of, of people you work with, were they also dressed in black as you described on Friday? Answer, yes, they wore black clothes. 
vous venez d'indiquer que you have just stated that you saw a lot of workers during the day and that you worked alongside them but at night you would return to s separate dormitories at the time can you explain to us where you slept during that period answer i did not know the villages but uh, they arrested west of the airport in their respective groups or units. And you yourself, where did you sleep? Did you sleep on the work site or outside of the work site? Answer. It was outside of the airport, a work site, a, a bit away from a dead work site. Quelle était la distance entre what was the distance from where you were sleeping and where you worked? Answer the distance from one squad or units to another was about twenty to thirty meters. Ce que j'aimerais savoir, Monsieur. What I would like you to tell me, witness, is this: when you got up in the morning and went to work, what was the distance from where you slept to where you worked? and how much time did it take you to cover that distance? Was it far off or close by? Can you please give us some estimates of the time and the distance? Answer. The sleeping squatters, the distance from the, the Sleeping quarter and uh, the work site was about uh, one uh, kilometer. Pouvez-vous rapidement décrire? Can you very quickly describe to us where you slept? Was there a roof, a mosquito nets, a hammock? Can you please give us an, a description of where you slept at the time? from Answer. They built uh, a small house and uh, with made out of the leaf made out of leaves, and there were no blankets for us to uh, cover ourselves. Combien de personnes dormaient? How many people slept with you in that shelter you have just described to us? There were 15 uh, people in one uh, shelter or one house. Thank you. On Friday, you stated that there was a medical unit, as at least that is what we understood in French. Can you explain to us what you meant by that term, medical unit? Medal, there were mobile medical units, and uh, if uh, workers uh, felt uh, unconscious, they would be prescribed uh, with uh, medicines to take. Quel type de médicament? Do you remember what kinds of medicines were administered? Answer. D 
the human made medicines, so traditional ones, the, not the, the medicines from the other countries. During that period, do you know whether a hospital existed at Kampong Chilam? Answer. They had, but there were none. There was none at my place. Avez-vous le souvenir qu'un des membres de votre Do you recall whether any member of your unit was sent to the hospital whenever he was he or she was sick? Answer, I could recall it. When the, my work colleagues fell uh, seriously sick, uh, uh, the truck uh, would come to pick them up, pick them up and uh, send them to the, the city, said the witness. Et est-ce que vous aviez vu, est-ce que vous avez vu revenir ces... And did you see those workers return to the work site after they were put in a truck and sent to the hospital? Answer, the sick uh, workers uh, were sent to the city for treatment and they would be back after two or three days. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le témoin. Thank you, witness. Mr. President, I'll now give the floor to my learned colleague. Thank you. President, uh, yes, you may now proceed. <coughs> Madam Chetwan Lee, uh, good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, everyone in, the, in and around uh, the courtroom. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Winnes. My name is Chetwan Lee. I am the civil party lawyer. I have observed since Friday that you have provided certain statements before this chamber. And now I would like you to make a clarification on the, some points to enlighten the courts. When you left, K4 at Khmuen Kaps Road. You were sent to Kampung Chenang Airfield, as stated by you, that uh, you went to Kampung Chenang on uh, the 15th of uh, January 1978. What were you told then? Answer. We were told that uh, we would be sent to construct uh, the airport in Kampung Chenang. All good look. Council, thank you. Who told you that? Answer. I could recall that Comrade Dern, who was from the southwest zone, came to replace the, the former cadre, and he told me that. Counsel, thank you. You stated before this chamber that uh, you no longer you were no longer a soldier by then. And when were you disarmed before you were sent to the airfield? Answer. 
answer. I had no rights to hold any weapons after I fell handicapped at K4. Council, thank you. Upon your arrival at the airfield, did you go with your group, with your own group, or were there any other members from division uh, going with you as well? And who were there to receive you all? Answer. Comrade Don from the Southwest Zone, though, who was there to receive us at Kampung Chinang. Council, thank you. Upon your immediate arrival, did you met? Did you meet uh, Talaway? from answer. Upon our arrival, we did not uh, see Talway there. Okun, that council. How many after that you met uh, Talway, or did you ever attend the meeting which uh, was which uh, Talway attended? Witness. I could recall that two months later, I met Talaway. Talaway. And council was Talaway in charge of that uh, Kampungchnang airfield. Answer: Yes, he was. Uh, responsible and in charge of that airfield. Question. Besides Talaway, did you see any other leaders, that is, Talaway's superiors or his uh, deputies coming through the work site? Answer. Besides uh, Talavay, uh, there was uh, Tamed. Question, did Tamed visit the work site often? Answer, only once in a while, that is, Probably on a weekly basis, he visited the work site. Question, how did he go to the work site? Was he escorted by bodyguards, or did he walk through the work site? Answer, during his visit, he was always in a jeep with two to three bodyguards. Question. After Tamed visited the work site, did he return to Talway's office or did he uh, leave the work site? Answer. I did not know about that. I did not know whether he left the work site or he went to uh, the office or he went elsewhere, as I did not even dare to look at his face. Question. Last time you testified to be before this court that leadership level of the uh, North Zone had been arrested and replaced by cadres from the uh, Southwest. Did you know any of those Southwest cadres? And did you ever see Tamok visit the work site? Uh, 
answer at that time southwest cadres came to replace the previous cadres and I did not know any of those uh, southwest cadres as for the mok I never saw him question don't you recall any named of cadres from the southwest zone answer those people who were sent to supervise K4 uh, replacing North Zone cadres uh, included Dion. Question Alina returned to the issue of the uh, airfield work site. While you were working there, did you witness any accident related uh, to uh, work there? Or work related injuries? Answer While I was working there, I saw some workers who failed and became unconscious from intensive work. Question among those workers working at the airfield and you already testified that there were a mixture of men and women and from your observation were there more men than women? And what were women assigned to do? Answer. There were more men than women, and they were assigned to work uh, separately. I only saw the women group when they left for their work at the work site. Question. So from what you said, there were uh, many workers from various divisions working at the airfield. What about eating? Was there a common eating? Was a bell rang so that you could go to collect your food ration? Or did you eat on site? Answer. We ate within our companies, and the food was given in ration to each member of the unit or the respective company. Questioned. What was the food ration, or could you eat freely? What what kind of rice that was given to you, and what about the soup? Answer: There was a soup, and we was given a bowl of rice, but it was not enough. Question. In terms of food ration and the uh, work you did, was the food sufficient? I mean, proportional to the workload? Answer No, it was not enough, as we did hard work and the food given to us was little. Question, I'd like to ask you about the uh, work assignment and distribution. Was work classified as heavy work or light work, or whether it was not considered that way, but the entire unit was working together? Answer. 
and uh, for workers working at the airfield, we worked in uh, groups and we worked uh, separately from other groups or units according to the assignment for our group. Question. While working there, did you work, did you usually work only with your uh, hands and light, light tools or were heavy machineries used? Answer. We worked according to our assignment. For instance, sometimes we had to have holes to dig the ground. For others who had to pull grass on the airfield, they also uh, needed holes. As for workers dealing with uh, rock breaking, they will be given hammers to do that kind of work. Question. Previously, you testified before this court that you were sent to attend a technical training session for a period of three months. What was the name of the person who made a request for you to go to attend the training? Was it Han or was it Pan? And what was his position? President, uh, witness, please wait. And Defense Counsel Andaguse, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. It was just to clarify, uh, in the French transcript, uh, we heard that uh, the witness went to a re-education session for three months. And now, uh, and then uh, in his statement, uh, he heard, uh, we heard about uh, training as a surveyor. So I would like to be clear about this. Lawyer for civil parties, I'd like to ask the witness to clarify the matter that he was sent to attend a training session on land surveying. And I'd like to know whether it was Han or it was Pan who submitted a request for him to attend the training. That is the nature of my question. Answer. It was Han who made a proposal for me to attend to the technical training in land surveying. Question. What, what topics were taught for this land surveying course? Answer. It's going to be a rather detailed response so that the chamber is clear once and for all. On the issue of land surveying, first, compact, so our compact roller will be used to flatten the ground. Then, we use a marker and we place it on to a ground to get a soil for testing. And when we got the, the volume of the compressed soil, which is 90%, max minimum, then we were sure that the soil was compressed enough and if we only get 70% result, then the, the soil compactor roller will be used to compress the soil again until we get the 90% result. Question. 
you said you attended that study session in Phnom Penh was your instructor a Cambodian or foreigner and where was the course held? Answer. The course was held in Phnom Penh. However, I did not know the location where the training was held. I believed it was at the south of the Pujantong Airport. Question. Was the instructor local or foreign? Question. The instructor was Chinese, assisted by an interpreter. Question. Besides the technical training you attended during that training session, was you, were you taught any political issues? Answer. Besides the uh, technical course, we were told to strive to work hard according to our respective work assignment. For instance, in my case, I was for the land surveying. If I made a mistake that I misunderstood the level of uh, land compress land compact, then I will be subject to disciplinary action. President, the time is appropriate for a short break. The chamber takes a break now and resumed at 10.30. Court officer, please assist the witness during the break at the waiting room for witnesses and experts and invite him to return to the courtroom at 10.30. The court is now in recess.